We're going to bring on our first guest, State Senator Dave Thompson, and uh, he is a Minnesota politician, a member of the Minnesota Senate, and he's a member of the Republican Party. He represents the people of District 58, which includes Dakota County and the southern Twin Cities metropolitan area. He's also a former radio personality. Dave Thompson is a candidate for the Republican nomination for governor in 2014. His website, as you can see on your screen, is Team Thompson MN. And uh, he graduated from East Grand Forks Senior High School in 1980. In 1984, he graduated from the University of North Dakota which, with majors in economics and political science. He received his law degree from the University of Minnesota Law School in 1987 and is a practicing attorney. He's been married since 1985 to his wife, Rhonda, and he has two children, Amanda, who is 20, and Phil, who is 18. So, Senator Thompson, thank you for coming on the show. Well, Tony, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Appreciate the chance to be here. Yeah, it's an honor to have you here. I'm Good to see you. It's been a while. It has. Uh, yeah. It has. And i uh, just excited to hear all about your campaign and your candidacy and, and everything of that sort. So how, how do you think things are going so far? You know, I'm feeling good, and I've always been a believer that, uh, that this ought to be about ideas and beliefs and telling people what you want to do. And I'm going all over the state doing that. I've already traveled thousands of miles since I declared June 26th. I'm having a great time meeting people, hearing about their concerns, and uh, so I think we're doing well, getting some traction, but I've certainly got some worthy opponents, and I'm going to have to work hard. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that you're a family man, and, and running for the governor seat of Minnesota, that, that's a big deal. And, and I just want to know, when you were thinking about becoming a candidate for this position, did you put a lot of thought into it or was it something that hit you right away or how did that decision making process happen? I certainly did put a lot of thought into it, although I will admit it happened over a somewhat compressed period of time. Uh, there seemed to be some interest in me doing this really about a year ago. And uh, it was over the course of six, eight months that I evaluated, you know, is there sufficient support for me that this makes sense? Talk to my family, certainly would not have done this without their support. Now my daughter is, as you indicated, 20 years old. She's off at college. My son is 18. He's a senior in high school. So, you know, they're at an age where uh, they're pretty self-sufficient and my wife is supportive and I care deeply about the state and the things I believe in. So. Um, I, I, th I thought about it pretty seriously over the course of six or eight months and then pulled the trigger in June. Mm -hmm. And Minnesota is a pretty big state, geographically speaking. Uh, you've been talking to a lot of people out there. What have you been hearing from Minnesotans about the state of the state? Well, it's interesting because, you know, we, we hear all the time that the economy is doing well and that people are feeling good about things. And, and I think to some degree that's true, but there does seem to be kind of this underlying concern that things are changing. And in particular with the, some of the taxes that were put into law by the, this governor and the Democratic leadership, of course, they took over uh, both houses of the legislature in 2013 after the 2012 election. I think there's a lot of concern about what the implications of that will be for uh, you know, a healthy economy going forward, a job climate that allows people to have, have good jobs and careers that they can raise their families. So there's some uneasiness. I think the child care unionization bill that was pushed by the Democrats, people see that as being very brazenly political. So people are concerned about those things. Mm -hmm. And uh, just recently it was reported by Kevin Diaz of the Star Tribune. They wrote an article about Minsure and, and mm -hmm. Obamacare. And, uh, the headline was 140,000 Minnesotans are getting notices that their health insurance plans are being canceled. Uh, first, are you hearing about this from people that you're talking about, Minnesotans that you're talking about? And then secondly, uh, if you're elected governor, are you more willing to improve within the infrastructure of Minsure or do you want to abandon Minsure altogether and start with something new? Well, in answer to the first question, yes, I hear about it everywhere I go. Now, the, of course, the, the people getting canceled from their insurance policies, that's something that's a relatively recent phenomenon. But just a general um, unsettled feeling about Obamacare, which, of course, Minsure is Minnesota's program that was put into place to facilitate Obamacare. Absolutely, there's a lot of angst about that. In terms of what I would do, what's really unfortunate, Tony, is Minnesota had one of the best systems in the country for taking care of underprivileged people who, who don't have access to health care on their own or, or health insurance. Mm -hmm. And we blew that up. Mm -hmm. And so I would not be interested in working within Minsure because that would require that we give in to Obamacare. And I believe that we're seeing that unravel before our very eyes. And I'd like to see us get rid of Minsure. I hope Obamacare goes away. And I want to get to a more market-driven 
uh, process where people are paying for their own routine medical care and then buying a relatively low cost major medical policy and put the doctor and the patient back in control of the transaction rather than the doctor and patient being bystanders while insurance companies negotiate with politicians. That's not the way it should work. Yeah, and we, you know, we heard a lot from some of the national politicians about how health care is broken, but you brought the example up of Minnesota and now, I've studied these numbers, and, and before Obamacare took effect, we had an over 90% coverage rate of Minnesota residents. So people were either covered by private health insurance or through Medicare, Medicaid, yes. or uh, some other program. And, and, and let's be clear, this is not an issue of medical care. Everybody in America, by law, has access to medical care. This is an issue of medical insurance. And here in Minnesota, as you correctly pointed out, the vast, vast majority of people had access to quality health coverage, and those who didn't could still be treated for serious medical conditions when they needed that treatment. So what we have done is taken one of the best functioning systems in the country and replaced it with what now everybody acknowledges is really a, a debacle. And can you uh, just explain to the audience a little more, because Republicans oftentimes get blamed for not having any solutions for health care. Uh, what are some of your ideas that you would bring to uh, increase coverage and, and decrease the cost of health care? Sure. Well, let's talk about the small percentage of people that are incapable of taking care of their own health care costs. That would be people that are not employed, where they get it provided, and don't earn enough money to take care of it. We are a caring people and we are not going to let the young, the infirm, and the elderly suffer for a lack of medical care, nor should we. Those folks need to be taken care of, and we had very good programs in Minnesota to do that before Obamacare and Minsure. For the vast majority of people, I would like to see a system where people pay for and take care of their own routine medical care. Just like you get an oil change for your car, if you go into the doctor to get your annual physical, you pay for that. Um, and then you have a, a medical policy to take care of you in the event of a catastrophic event, such as a serious disease or a broken bone or something along those lines, and, and have the marketplace then compete for those dollars. And it can be a much lower cost system, it's a competitive system, and most importantly, Tony, again, it puts the buyer of healthcare services, the patient, in, in, in charge of his or her own care and is dealing with the physician, the person who provides the care. So that's what I would like to see. Again, acknowledging that some people aren't going to be able to do that on their own because they don't have resources, and we are certainly going to provide the backup systems that Minnesota always has to make sure our young, our infirm, and our elderly are taken care of. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people always say that Minnesota is a, a very liberal state or it's a purple state, uh, but Republicans did have the majority in the State House and Senate in 2011, 2012, I think the same year you were elected in 2010. Right. You're right. Uh, can you talk a little more about when uh, the conservatives had control of the House and Senate? What sort of policies were enacted and uh, what were some of the consequences of those policies? Well, let's start with education. It's near and dear to my heart. Um, we, uh, we got in, in place some reforms that we believe improved quality and particularly improved quality in some of the central city areas where we see a lot of problems. And lo and behold, the most recent data show that the, uh, the achievement gap, which is the distance between people of color mm -hmm. and, and, and whites mm -hmm. in achievement, has narrowed somewhat. So we had some success there. Um, we also of course, we're able to balance the budget without raising taxes. Now, personally, I would like to have had even a lower level of spending, but the people did elect Mark Dayton governor in 2010, and so we had to deal with him. But we were able to uh, not raise taxes, and what happened is we ended up with a huge excess of money coming into the state because of the improved economic situation. And so we, we actually created structural balance within our budget. So, uh, you know, education is an example. Uh, the budget is an example. We engaged in some permitting reforms that made it easier to do business in this state, which of course creates a healthy economy and jobs. So those would be some examples. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in 2011 and 2012, the debate uh, was focused, especially in the campaign time, on the issue of marriage, marriage equality. Uh, the proponents of those who were saying to put the marriage amendment on the ballot when it was being debated, were saying that it was time for the people to decide this issue. They were saying they wanted the voters of Minnesota to decide and not judges and, and not politicians. And of course it was put on, on the ballot in November of 2012 and the mm -hmm. marriage amendment lost. So uh, my question is, um, if you're elected governor, is 
the issue of marriage? Is it settled in the state of Minnesota? I don't think it's settled forever. I certainly think it's settled for the short term. Uh, I, I'm a believer that part of leadership, part of being a good leader, is understanding the mindset of the people and where they are. And I think before we're ever going to reverse that, hearts and minds of the people have to change. And uh, I think it would be ill-advised for any candidate for office right now to campaign on this issue. I don't like the decision that people made. They voted the marriage amendment down, as you correctly stated, in November of 2012. And they elected people who, uh, who gave us, uh, you know, gay marriage in this state. But I respect our system. I respect the decision of the people. I hope that the people's mindset changes over years and we can go back the other direction. But for now, it's not something I'm talking about on this campaign. I think people want schools to be taken care of and children to have access to a good education. And I think we want to see a healthy economy where people feel secure and confident in their future. And those are the things I'm going to focus on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just back to the economy, is the, the state of the Minnesota economy, are we in good shape right now? And where can we improve? Well, I think we're, uh, you know, our unemployment rate is lower than the national average, mm -hmm. and that's good. Um, but we are not developing enough career kinds of jobs. Our unemployment rate is still higher than it should be. You know, we've gotten used to kind of a new normal. <laughs> uh, President Bush got ridiculed for where the economy was, and yet we've never come back to those kinds of unemployment rates as when he was, you know, in the middle of his term, and not that I was a fan of Bush on everything. But, um, but I think there's a sense of insecurity moving forward, and as we continue to spend too much money in government, which our, our you know, Democrats did, I think there's some concern about the future of the economy and, and one big area that will have a dramatic impact on our economy is our ability to educate our children well. And so we got to focus on that, and we've also got to focus on getting our regulatory and tax structure reformed and in a better position to keep attracting businesses and having them grow here rather than losing them to the competition. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've had multiple guests on, on this show. We've had Democrats, independents, uh, Republicans, and, and then civilians. When we talk to people door to door, just in our neighborhoods, one thing people are very tired of, especially coming from Washington, D.C., is the divisiveness, the, the R versus the D mentality or liberal versus conservative. And it seems that the, the back and forth is in a lot of ways getting out of control. And I wanted to know your experience in the Senate. Where are some areas that you have worked uh, with Democrats, with your colleagues, and then also where is there that common ground where we can really build coalitions for solutions that are going to increase uh, employment here, people are going to be making more money, saving more money, be secure in their real estate investments and whatnot? Yeah. Well, um, I've worked with Democrats in a number of areas. In fact, I got four or five pieces of legislation that I chief authored that were signed by this governor. One, for example, that I think people would be shocked that it was bipartisan, and that is to get an audit of our state employees to make sure people they were claiming as dependents for health care insurance were legitimately dependent. And in fact, we found out that many weren't, and the auditor has indicated that we may have saved as much as $4 million in, tax rev in, tax, in taxes spent in 2012 as a result of that. Governor Dayton signed that bill. Um, I've worked across the aisle uh, with others uh, in this last session. Uh, Bobby Joe Champion, the Senator Champion, who's you know clearly on the other side of the political spectrum. And interestingly enough, I was nominated to go to a legislative leaders seminar in Virginia by Democrat Ann Rest. So I have worked with people across the aisle. Now you asked, where can we find common ground? Mm -hmm. Look, I believe all people fundamentally want the same thing. The opportunity to pursue their dreams succeed at something in life and has a, have a sense of purpose and meaning. And if we talk about creating a healthy economy and allowing freedom for people to do the kinds of things that they want to do and keep as much of their money as we can while acknowledging that we do have to have a government and there needs to be some taxes to run it, I think as long as we talk about those things, those are people issues. Those are mom and pop kitchen table issues that really don't divide Democrats and Republicans. So I don't like to go talk about I'm a conservative or mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a Republican. I like to talk about the kinds of things that I believe all people, regardless of their political party, want from life. Mm -hmm. And if we provide those as a government, we can come together. Mm -hmm. And do you think the uh, campaign, whoever gets the endorsement, the Dayton versus the Republican, is it going to be a divisive campaign? Oh, sure. Uh, yes. I mean, there's a, there's a division of ideas and beliefs and values. But one thing I really try to do, Tony, is I always talk about my differences in policy and I try not to make it personal. In fact, I will tell you right now, I like Governor Dayton. 
obviously I've been around him many times and spent time with him. I think he's a, he's a decent guy. We just simply disagree on the issues. Mm -hmm. So I will very pointedly uh, you know, uh, mark those differences, but I will not make it personal, and I don't think it should be personal. It should be about ideas and philosophy. Mm -hmm. And as I stated at the beginning, your website is teamthompsonmn.com. Uh, Correct. And can you tell us a little more about what to expect in these next months? Are there any big events or ways to get a hold of you? Well, you can certainly reach me at my website. Anybody who wants to volunteer, comment, criticize, whatever, you can follow me on Twitter at thompson for gov thompson for gov is Twitter. Um, and we'll, of course, be speaking to a lot of uh, different events, uh, you know, wh whether it's chamber events or, or Senate district events, uh, BPOU events, those kinds of things. I'll be continuing to get all over the state and talk to people and get out there on the media as much as I possibly can to talk about the things I believe in. And hopefully uh, Minnesota will agree with the kinds of things I believe in and we'll be uh, off to the races. Well, Senator Dave Thompson, I really appreciate you coming on the show and I hope you will come on again in the future. Anytime that I'm available, I'd be happy to. Tony, thank you. Good to see you again. Thank you, Senator. All right. Good to see you too. That's Senator Dave Thompson. We're honored to have him here live in the studio, and he's running to be the next governor of the state of Minnesota. Encourage all our viewers, as always, to look into the candidates. Uh, his website is teamthompsonmn.com. Uh, check it out. Check him out. And if you like what he stands for, go out and help him. And uh, so with